So the first thing you should know about batch billing and point of sale in court reserve is the fact that you have to turn them on. Now you would do that by coming over here to the settings field and actually coming into organization settings general and scroll all the way down. And just above that are the two boxes for batch billing and point of sale. If you click one of these boxes, then that at that point is when we actually charge you the $25 per month to use um, this service. So again, if you look on your um, invoice and there's a $25 fee for batch billing or point of sale, um, that's how that is turned on and how that's calculated as well. If you're going to use revenue categories in point of sale to go along with, you know, the other things in the system, you would also need to come into settings. And when you do your online settings, come down here and set up your revenue categories um, to go into your point of sale system as well. So there's two buttons, two ways to get into point of sale. Um, the first way is over here to the left. Uh, this is right underneath the audit log. And as well, we have made it very easy and clear to see up here in the top corner, um, the orange button as well. This would be the go directly to the point of sale um, screen. So if you're running a front desk or the, your pro shop and you just wanna go directly to your point of sale, that's what the orange button is for. Uh, this one over here to the left is more for setup um, and things of that nature. Now do know that we have some great articles, um, lots of education up here in our knowledge base. So after today's webinar, if you have additional questions, of course, our chat support team, we want to um, be available to answer your questions, um, but also know that we do have a lot in our knowledge base as well. So let's go ahead and go into this point of sale tab so that we can kind of look at some setup. You'll see over here on the left hand side, um, launch point of sale. We'll do that here in the end, um, but let's go ahead and look at our items. So first you'll wanna come in and you'll wanna set up your item categories. Um, pretty self-explanatory, um, but if we go up here to create an item category, um, you're just going to enter the name of that category. And then if you do revenue categories, then associate that to a revenue category here. So if we take a look at food, You'll see here if we go in and just take a look at edit food and then your food and beverage um, revenue category here. You can sort these. So sorting them, you would just move them up and down. So I'm just dragging and dropping almost like the scheduler does up and down. And then of course, you can go in under each category and see the items you've created. So before we do that, let's hop over here quickly to our item list again. This is a very simple point of sale system where you can come in, create items, you can create variations of items, which means that under my club logo windbreaker, I actually have different sizes of windbreakers here with cost and then of course stock on hand as well. So if we go in and create an item, of course we've, let me go in and actually just show you an edit of one a little easier. So we've got our club logo windbreaker as the item name. You can of course associate your text colors, your categories clothing. If you charge us tax rate on this merchandise, uh, you can do that here. Um, select your image. Um, now the image does have to be uh, squared. Um, so if it's a 200 by 200, it does have to be squared. Um, Tim can probably mention a little bit more about that. No, I think you said you you said it right. Is it just needs to be proportionally the same, both size and width. So 50 by 50, 100 by 100, 200 by 200. Those all work, and we'll resize it as necessary. You just can't have uh, images that are outside the same width and length. And you can easily go into Google search, as way most of our clubs do, search on that. And even in Google search, you can search for proportionally sized images to make that easier for you. Okay. So then we come down here to price and inventory. Of course, we've got, you know, things already set up as far as variations go. Um, Tim, do you want to kind of talk around stock on hand and stock on hand alert? Sure. So if you click on, uh, just click on one of those, just click edit. Um, so really the stock on hand is, this is all about inventory management. So as you, as you bring up or you create your items, you can uh, set the initial stock. And then what's going to happen is as you um, sell that stock, um, sell that item, then that stock is going to obviously decrement. And then when you receive stock, you can come in here and add more stock to it. If you set a stock on hand alert, 
then it, once that stock level reaches that amount, then that alert will fire to uh, your administrators to let them know, hey, I need to order more large windbreakers, for example. So uh, it's a great way, just a little bit of um, a feature. So you also get some inventory management with the point of sale and then also an inventory valuation report that I will talk about more in just a bit. Awesome. And then your description, and then you can also mark this as discontinued as well. So that just goes around a little bit about your item list and how to create those very simple process. Now, if we go back to our item categories again, and if we click, we can see our different variations um, that we've created. Um, and then again, if you have specific tax percentages that you want to use to add to different um, you know, items in your point of sale, um, then you can set those up as here as well. So before we go over to launching and kind of doing that checkout process, Tim, have I missed anything? No, I think you, um, you covered everything very well. Okay, great. So we've launched the point of sale. And of course, if you remember back, the orange button at the top that said point of sale would lead you directly to this as well. So again, if you're running a front desk, someone comes in and wants to buy a granola bar, you just, oh, let me get rid of over here. Yes, I want to cancel. I was uh, practicing, of course, before the webinar today. So to put things in our shopping cart, it's a simple click of the granola bar. You're going to associate how many we're going to add to the cart. Now, one thing that I do want to point out is if you would like to modify the charge of this granola bar, then you have to do it from this screen by simply clicking on the edit pencil that's located right here. And then you can go in and associate now a new price for this particular item. So we've got our item, we've got our tax already set up, and then we simply hit the click the checkout button. Now, if you allow members or kind of a charge to a house account, uh, we'll come in here, we'll search for one of our members, Wilma. It brings up Wilma's current balance at the organization. And then you have a couple of different payment methods here. Of course, we've got the cash check. Um, you can do a charge to account. So go ahead and put it on her house account. But it looks like here, Wilma has a card on file. So if Wilma would like to go ahead and pay with the payment that she has on file, then you simply click card on file and then process sale. If you wanted to charge this to Wilma's account, charge to account. And then again, if we were paying, for instance, cash, uh, you could put in that, you know, she's given us $5. Your change would be due here, process sale. And are you sure? Of course, uh, again, we've put in the ability for you to print receipts and receipt buttons are here. So you can either print from a standard receipt printer um, or um, an eight and a half by 11 printer as well. Tim? No, I think you did good. I think the, um, the one thing that uh, if you click on the add something to the cart, the one thing that I would mention, the one that you skipped over, and that's okay, uh, if you check out, is the credit card option. So those that have the credit card swipers and terminals, this is where you would go. Uh, you click that option. Uh, it's sitting there waiting on the input. At this point, when you click process sale, the uh, information will go to the terminal. Or if you have um, that terminal can't read it, you always have the option to manually input the credit card here. Um, right there in the credit card section. So other than that, yeah, this is a good, not, I know that probably one of your questions, um, and I just wanted to sort of get ahead of you, is how can you sort of display more items, if you want to close that screen, actually, how to, how to display more items here, and maybe how to change the, um, like, give like a popular item list. So both of those two things we're going to be uh, enhancing in a future release very soon where you're gonna be able to put your like most popular category so that it's a frequent, that way if you got items across different categories that are popular, you want them all on one screen, you'll be able to get to that and you'll be able to tag which of those items are your very popular items and have them all on one screen for your front desk staff. Um, and then, like I said, um, the other one is the ability to, we, we only show six items here, but some that are used. And we did that specifically for iPad users. So this is a very um, good way. A lot of our clubs and organizations are using point of sale on an iPad uh, at their bar or at their you know small retail shop. So what we're doing though, for those organizations that are using computers that have scroll opportunity, we're actually gonna let you specify how many items you wanna see on the screen here to make it easier for you to see a big, larger subset of items without paging 
all the way through the pages. So those are just two things that I thought of that I would mention. I also want to mention this miscellaneous button here. A lot of our clubs who want to have people pay for lessons or just have a button to where they can go in and assess a fee, um, they would simply click this, put one of these in their cart, and then they could actually go over here and change this and charge, say, $50 for a lesson um, so that they can actually process a lesson through the point of sale. Now, of course, we would love for you to run <laughs> lessons through point or court reserve um, in the lesson module because it does clearly indicate lesson, but this is a quick way to do a miscellaneous item in your point of sale. Absolutely. And another thing, you may be looking at these items and like, what's the parentheses 20 on the windbreaker mean? That's your current stock on hand. So it's a, for those that have an item that is tracking stock, because that's optional, like the miscellaneous, you don't see the parentheses because Ashley in her setup has taken the ability to track stock off of that one because it doesn't really make sense. So for those that do have stock, it's a way for somebody calls up and says, hey, I want one of those uh, large windbreakers. How many do you have on stock? Do you have any on stock? The front desk person can easily say, yeah, it looks like as long as you guys are accurately putting in your stock numbers, then they can actually report back, oh yeah, I have 20 on hand. Mm -hmm. And you'll see here on the granola bar, we are out of stock now. And it does indicate that they're, um, you know, when you do run out of stock based on the inventory that you've put in the system as well. Now, Tim, you mentioned that we can, or the clubs can now use a scanner. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, um, it is, it is a, a work, uh, it is something we want to make a little better because we want you to be anywhere on the screen and be able to scan. Right now though, if you do want to scan a UPC, it is, um, you know, you can do that, but you just have to put the focus in on that text box first. So you actually have to move the mouse and click on the enter UPC uh, text box up there. And then you can use a USB scanner to scan an item. And if it matches one of these SKUs that are on your point of sale, it will bring that one up and immediately bring it up to set the quantity. So, but most of our clubs are dealing with a small amount of merchandise or small amount of food. And this you, uh, user interface without the scanner is sufficient for most of our clients. We did have a feature request question, Tim. Um, it, can you put these in alphabetical order? Um, and currently you can't do that, but that might be a great feature request. You, you actually, you can put these in items in any order that you want. So if you go back to dashboard um, and you go into your setup where you were, uh, so if you go into point of sale and open, hit the plus key on that club logo windbreaker, uh, actually go to the item categories, I'm sorry, and then open up clothing. So you can sort those, you manually can sort it, but yeah, you can sort that any way you want. So now if you do that, now you'll see when she goes back to point of sale, visor will be listed first. So you technically can get it any way you want. So now if you click the clothing category, you'll see the visors first now. So you can technically, it doesn't default, it defaults, uh, I can't even remember what it defaults to by default, but we allow you to set the categories on the left in whatever order you want, and then the products underneath each category in whatever order you want. So if you're good at ABCs, you can definitely do that now. <laughs> awesome. Great question, Deborah. Yeah, that was really good. Okay, so Tim, I'm actually going to turn this over to you. You don't, you don't have to turn it over. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to you and make you the host and that way. Um, sure. We can. So you guys go ahead and he's going to talk about the point of sale reporting. Um, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and type your questions in the Q&A and, and things of that nature. And we'll. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to go in here and go back into the point of sale here on the left. And I covered this uh, also, if you've sit in on one of our financial reporting webinars, I'm just gonna quickly go through the same thing that I go there. Uh, if you guys, we're getting ready to publish all of our webinar, educational webinars on our, on our courtreserve.com website. So um, I would say sometime early or mid next week, you'll be able to go out to our website and, and get to that financial reporting webinar if you haven't seen it. And it'll go into a little bit more detail on all these reports. Um, and some of the other financial reports that you may want to know about. So under reports in point of sale is where you're going to find um, the, the, the items and the categories uh, and information for your point of sale system. So the first one is item sales. Um, if I open this up a little bit on the date range, 
Um, this is really just a reporting of how, which items are selling um, the most. We're actually gonna be adding some graphs and some very visual charting here um, in our analytics project that we got coming later this year. Um, but for now, it's a, a grid format. It basically is gonna show you every item that's sold, the category, your net sales, the taxes on that item, obviously, and uh, your profit margin here at the end. So, uh, uh, and you can also filter this by category and you can also export any of these reports to Excel here on the top right. Um, the category is just a way to, uh, to see how you did at the category level. So how you most, if you wanna see all your clothing or all your F&B or food and beverage or all of your stringing labor without all the individual items underneath that, this is how you can sort of roll this all up into a category and see the sales by category. So you can see which categories in your pro shop are which um, uh, are selling the best, okay? The inventory valuation is just, it's the standard inventory report that you would see. Um, you, you know, this is obviously in any accounting software, but this is just gonna show you basically your account or your item categories. Basically, um, if you're tracking, now you need to be tracking your stock in order for this report to be uh, of real value, but you can see what your average cost is, what your asset of value is, your percentage of that, your retail value and the percentage of your total retail. So this is just your sample uh, run of the mill inventory valuation report that you guys may use if you're tracking inventory. And then the sales tax um, is uh, the same sales tax report that you would see on the normal sales tax reporting side. But this is right now in court reserve, we track all point of sale items if you choose to add tax, both added tax and included tax. And then we can tax court time, uh, reservation types, lessons, and then we do memberships. We still do not at this time do event taxing programs. Um, that is something that's on our radar that we will then have everything in court reserve uh, taxable. But if you need to get this to your accountant, this is the easiest way to pull all of your tax reports. You obviously can do this from the sales summary as well. Now that we've added tax there and a lot of clubs choose to do that. <clears throat> but if you want a simple breakdown of the three categories of taxes in court reserve, the sales tax report will give you that. And this payment summary is just a different way to get to the regular payment summary under the report section in court reserve. And then lastly, um, the sales, this is your sales journal. This is basically as you're progressing through the day, if you have something come up or you want to see who tendered the transaction, how the transaction was tendered, what that customer purchased, this is how you get to that. So this is just going to be a running total of everything that was purchased that day, that week, that month, that year. Um, and you can see I can expand this open and I can see exactly what was in their cart, what they paid for it, what the tax was and what that total transaction was for all of the items. So this is just a great way. And we're going to be adding some stuff here. This is where you're going to be able to go back and, um, you know, going to be, be able to be searchable. You can refund items from here, put inventory back into your, you know, if you ref come in here and refund one of the items in that sale, be able to process that refund and be able to add that, um, that item amount back to your inventory. So, so that's the sort of the point of sale reporting. 